was exactly right here inside this museum that in 1916 the Irish troops, civilians fought for their independence. They tried. They tried to fight against the British arm. The history says that there was a failure, but they fought right here inside this museum. Welcome to the capital and largest city of Ireland. Dublin, a city that's as intimate as a village and as friendly as an Irish pub. Framed by mountains, centered on a river and edged by a beautiful bay, the city's streets and alleys are filled with vibrant art and historic buildings, hip cafes and traditional old man pubs, as Dubliners call them. While walking, you will feel the energy of over 1,000 years of history. As echoes of the Vikings mix with buzzing boutiques, cobbled streets reverberate with the sounds of buskers and 18th century parks play host to festivals, film and food markets. That's one of the main places that people come to shop a lot. So. That's another YouTube over there. And that's the museum. There's a lot of things going on here. That's the Harry Street. You find a lot of stores. And also flea market every day here. Original stuff on the street. Harry Street and the Mary Street. Good place for shopping. Yeah. Right in front is the church restaurant. I only decided that it's pretty cool, the food is good. This is O'Connor Street. The GPO Museum, a place where you will learn and explore the 1916 Easter Rising and modern Irish history. It's one of the biggest museum. Dublin. This is the Spire of Dublin. It stands at a staggering 125 metres high, making it the tallest stainless steel monument in the world, as well as Europe's tallest sculpture. You gotta have to be careful when you walk in Dublin, especially in this area right here. O'Connor Street, because the train's all over the place. They can hit you easily if you don't pay attention while you're walking. Monument of William Smith O'Brien. Sentenced to death October 17, 1803. I have not figured out yet how the transportation here uh, works. So I know that you have for some coins or buy a card. There's so many buses. On Easter Monday 1916, Irish nationalists launched an armed revolt against British rule in Ireland. Although quickly suppressed by the British Army, the Rising was a seminal moment in modern Irish history, helping pave the way to the nation's independence in 1922. Right in front of me, that's the O'Connell Monument. And straight ahead, there's another monument that replaced Nelson Monument. Nelson's statue was destroyed in 1960s, I believe 1966. That's a whole principal, one of the principals who was like in Dublin, come up. O'Connell. A few things contra lodges, uh, restaurants, hotels. Yeah, Continue on to Westmoreland Street. Briefly. He was a lot of you here briefly. Oh, there you go. 
Então, diz que Esquina tem um camelô, meu amigo. Aqui é cheio de camelô. For interesting facts about Dublin, Dublin has the youngest population in all of Europe. Approximately one third of the population are under 25 years of age. Dublin was recognised as an UNESCO City of Literature in 2010. Guinness is brewed in Ireland and will continue be for many years to come. Dublin is home to over 750 pubs. This street leads to the Temple Bar, which is right here on the right. Also straight ahead, you can find the Dumbly Castle. You've been up in the Encontro Castelo de Dumbly. I'm not following the Explore our Dumbly. And um, the best way to learn every corner here in Dumbly is walking. That's not another way. You know how to rent a car, everything's closed. The landmarks here, they are pretty, pretty close to each other between five, ten minutes walking. So. That's the city hall right now. We're gonna go straight to the Dublin Castle. That's the Dublin Castle entrance. We are inside the Dumbly Castle. That's, that's the closest castle here in Dublin. All the other castles like a 30, 40, two hours away from Dublin. This is a beautiful castle. Dublin Castle is one of the most important buildings in Irish history. The history of this city centre site stretches back to the Viking Age and the castle itself was built in the 13th century. From 1204 for until 1922 it was the seat of English and later British ruled in Ireland. During that time it served principally as a residence for the British monarch's Irish representative, the Viceroy of Ireland, and as a ceremonial and administrative centre. The castle was originally developed as a medieval fortress under the orders of King John of England. It had four corner towers linked by high curtain walls and was built around a large central enclosure. Constructed on elevated ground once occupied by an earlier Viking settlement, the old castle stood approximately on the site of the present upper castle yard. That's the presidential hall. We are about to enter the reception rooms known as the State Apartments. These palatial spaces accommodated the Viceroy and were the focus of great state occasions. That's the picture of Queen Victoria. She was 22 years old when this paint was commissioned. The Queen of Great Britain. Right here. The Rainha Victoria. Ela tinha 22 anos quando essa pintura foi feita. Foi Rainha da Inglaterra. Marido da Vitória. See where the alarm goes off. Well, that's the throne. The throne was made for the visit to Ireland of King George IV in 1821. It was later used by Queen Victoria and King Edward VII during their visits to the castle. The last monarch to use it before Irish independence was King George V in 1911. On display over the doors in this space are six important mythological paintings by the Italian artist Gaetano Gondolfi painted in 1767. This castle is cool. Look at the monster. Wow. It's a portrait. Harry Marquis and his king. 
This room takes its name from the collection of portraits of Irish viceroys that have hung on its walls since 1849. The room main function was as a dining room where state dinners were held. It continues to be used for state receptions by the Irish government today. Portraits from the kings, dukes. St. Patrick's yes. Hall was previously used as a ballroom and is now the location for the Irish presidential inaugurations. The room and its interior date from the 18th century. Ceiling. Not show us the history about this castle. Below the castle, excavations have uncovered parts of the structure of the medieval castle alongside the remains of some of Viking Dublin's original defences. These defences take the form of a stone-covered embankment, a section of which has been preserved within the massive circular walls of the 13th century powder tower. Right here on the left, this remains Viking wall of the first century. The Chapel Royal was designed by Francis Johnston and was opened as the Anglican Chapel of the Viceroy on Christmas Day 1814. It was as expensive to build, it became known as the Chapel Royal after King George IV attended service on the 2nd of September 1821. Following Irish independence in 1922, it lay dormant before becoming a Roman Catholic church in 1943. It is now deconsecrated. The galleries and stained glass windows are ornamented with coats of arms representing many of Ireland's viceroys. Right here in front is the city hall. Here. Right here, that's the entrance of Dublin Castle. That's a breathtaking right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs>